oh, don't worry, this is not a normal cake. You'll like it. It's tiramisu. And I'm like, tirami F you. I don't like it. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. I am Disturbia. And this here is Frank, who's just getting more and more naked as Why the day Frank goes naked? by. I just realized that. Oh, can somebody cover Frank. him up? Oh. Yeah. There we go. Now he's <laughs> dressed. How you guys doing? It's a beautiful Thursday. It is. I'm officially older now. That's okay. You're also younger than you'll be in the future. It was my birthday yesterday. Um, check it out. Check out the podcast. Show them the birthday cake that you didn't eat. Oh, where is it? Right there on the other side. Thanks to me. I didn't. I didn't get one we could share because I'm gluten free and you're not. I got a little birthday cake. I'm not going to eat it because I don't eat cake. Not because I'm against. You're not going to eat it? No. I've seen you eat vanilla donuts. That's why I thought you would eat this. Yeah, but even vanilla donuts, I'll eat once in a while. You know what? Let's give this to Lauren. Yes, it is Lauren's birthday. Happy birthday. People do this on um, mukbangs. They take it to the camera so that, like, like oh, as if like they're here. sharing. Yeah. Have, are you sure they're not just showing it to the camera? No, like they say, they say, here, take a bite. They say, here, take a bite. They can't hear you if you're talking away from the mic. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't like cake. Yesterday I was out to dinner and like they brought a cake out and um, it's always tough because, you know, every time I say I don't like cake, I guess it's like one of those universal things that most people do like. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, I'll just have a slice. And it's I like, know. I truly don't like the taste of it. I know. Uh, if like, can you imagine if it was like, I don't know, Brussels sprouts or something and everyone was like, well, it's your I birthday. Mean, Eat Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts taste like Brussels sprouts, but like you're making such broad strokes here. You don't like the t- taste of cake well no no i don't there's not, so many cakes it's 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 the it's the sweetness really um that was yesterday i was like oh well, don't worry this is not a normal cake you'll like it it's tiramisu and i'm like tirami f you i don't like it i don't i i don't i like cake somewhat i don't like tiramisu it's it's because it's this mushy yeah, element right yeah mm-hmm. and there's a lot of frosting not into it but you know it's uh, i guess tiramisu your... which is an italian um it's an italian dessert it's like it's like uh, cake and I think pudding, cream. Yeah, it was, like, it it was kind of wet a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, soaked in coffee or something. I don't know. All I know is it's like, oh, well, you're going to like this one. Have a taste. I know. And I'm like, well, that's I, 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 every time a cake is presented for me, I have to show the I audience know. once again that I still don't like cake. I know. Oh. Now, yep. would you be would you be a little more? Um, like, do you do you like banana bread or anything that's not? It's like more on the bready side. It's not so sweet. I like it, banana bread. Yeah, that's I do. Maybe a, a compromise. Okay. Yeah. But so next year, if anyone is going to be getting me anything, make sure it's banana bread. Do you like nuts in it? I will eat the nuts in it. Okay. I'm, I'm not against it. Okay. If I like had my perfect banana bread, it wouldn't have nuts. Okay. I don't know. You know what? Maybe it's because I'm older now. <laughs> but I think the nuts are kind of. It adds a little bit of an element. True. Because uh, it's it's a mushy bread and it's yeah. like it's a little little crunch. Yeah, it, uh, it does some wonders. I'll tell you that much. All right. Well, yeah. Um, it's Lauren's birthday. She's she's your birthday buddy and birthday um, buddy Taurus gang. May Horns Taurus. Up. May Taurus. May Taurus. May the Taurus be with you. Yes. <laughs> um, I saw when it was uh, it was the 9th of May. So you know, like uh, May fourth, the Star Wars day. Yeah. Um, so May the fourth be with you. May 9th, um, five nine, <laughs> on TikTok they were saying it's a. Uh, Short King's Day. Oh, that's Nash- funny. National Short I like Kings. it. That's funny. Because <laughs> five nine is short. If if a, if a male was five feet nine inches yeah. in our in our metric system, we have a metric system. No, no. we have what is it called? An imperial system. I don't in know. In our system, and so you're saying number one that five nine is short, and it's not. It's not. It's actually I think the average. Yeah, but <laughs> not um, for me. Okay, um, but. Oh, so, the, so so they're celebrating those people on that day. By also, so it's a very American because five nine is only going to work for people who put month first. Yeah, and five nine is only going to work for people who use feet and inches. Yeah, I also don't know if it's even going to catch on. I think I saw one person say it, and was, I just got was a he little five nine. It was a woman. <laughs> um, it was. I got a nice little chuckle out of it. Yeah. But yeah, so overall, yesterday was a great day. Check out the podcast. It was a clown podcast, a circus podcast, circus. Um. Went to the circus for my birthday. It was great. But now it is time to start this new year of life right. 
Let's make this year the best year ever. So you're into um, starting lines and finish lines because yeah. I'm really not. Yeah. Like you're one of those people like you have to start either beginning of the year. Or yeah. Mon- birthday, every Monday. A Monday. Start of the day even. Uh, like, yeah. Yeah. Like everything needs to start good to continue. That's how, I mean, by, that's how I feel about mornings. Okay. I, I, I'm a firm believer and advocate for the way you start your morning is how the rest of your day is going to be. If you start it snoozing your alarms <clears throat> and saying, I'm not getting out of bed. Yeah. You're going to have a lazy day. I don't agree. I'm speaking generally here. Okay. If in the morning you push yourself and you, yeah. you get out of bed and maybe even make it, maybe uh, maybe go for a walk around the, the perimeter of your, your property and I think you'll have a better day. Your property, your estate. <laughs> well, I was going to say the block, but I don't think everyone, will, like, well, that's a lot of walking. So I'm saying you don't Dep- have to walk. It's all out. dependent on where you're you living. Know, I, I'm not saying go out. And four in the morning and go to the gym for three hours. I'm saying if you just get up and you, you do things actively, mentally it's, actively. It's and funny not you should um, it's funny you should bring this up because I was just thinking about it the other day. And you know, everyone says tomorrow's another day or start again, you know so start fresh. Yeah, like um sleep on it and stuff like this. And the reason I said I disagree is because recently I've decided that you don't have to wait till morning. You don't have you can you can Minute to minute, you can say, okay, now. I I'm not, I don't disagree with that. You don't have to agree with me. No, uh, but I don't because <laughs> I, I do believe that with like New Year's re- resolutions and stuff and people are like, wait for yeah. like, oh, next year I'll, I'll figure. Or if they, they feel like they've screwed. Yeah. Like in, in December, it's like, oh, I screwed up already. Right. Next year, it's all different. It's like, no, how about today? How about today be, uh, is, is right. different? But um, I'm saying overall more of just like an ease thing. Like I feel like it's sometimes easier to mentally yeah start fresh, start something new. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like a, a new pa- a new page. So you want to do that because your birthday was yesterday, and your next one is in 360 four days. Four days. It's, as long as it's not a leap year this year, which I don't think it is. I think last year was 2023. But um, yeah. So anyway, today's Thursday. Um, <clears throat> what else? Oh, you know what? I'll tell you what else. It is National Odometer Day. National Odometer Day. Yeah. And an odometer. Or speedometer. Wait. No, it was odometer. odometer. I heard you say it. Um, the odometer tracks the mileage of something. Oh, is it? Yeah, like check your odometer. It'll say this car has driven for 30,000 miles. Yeah. Um, we had a car that had so many miles. Yeah. That we impressed it was, uh, all the mechanics. Yeah. It, uh, we had, Toyota Prius was the one of the cars that I had. And um, got it from a courier company who ran it into the ground, yeah. obviously. And so it was on its third engine. Yeah. And basically, I, had ima- I imagine being a driving vessel for work for a 24-hour courier company, the dr- like drivers would switch in and out. Yeah. And the car was always driving. Right. So it had over... It wasn't that old. I think it was a 2014. It had 500,000 miles on it plus, like uh, more than 500,000 miles. In what year? In 2019. Okay, yeah. Cause. Yeah, 2019. So in, in five years, it's like 100,000 miles a year. And for those of you who don't know, the average is 10,000 miles a year. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the average person in 10 years will drive 100,000 miles. And so 500,000 miles for the average right. person will be 50 years. Right. And um, anytime I took it to the mechanic, speaking of odometers, they were like, I think your odometer's messed up <laughs> because there is no physical way that anyone could have driven 500,000 miles right in that span of time but no it happened it worked i missed um, that car i remember in trinidad uh <clears throat> they would say for speedometer and the speedometer tracks how fast you're going yeah and they would say speedometer speedometer yeah so i don't <laughs> know if they said oh dummies uh odometer Odom- meter? odometer they couldn't have said that no well i think because speedometer it makes sense like speed o yeah. meter but oh odometer right wouldn't mean anything yeah and if someone says i'm from trinidad and i don't say speedometer i don't care okay <laughs> yeah i was there and i encountered um people who said it and i and that's why i remember yeah, it well i mean look at so, america i mean obviously I trinidad is the size of uh, one city in america yeah. but someone could go to america and say oh do you know they call these fizzy drinks pop and then you and me would be like we right. don't call it pop right but and I did. I was it, there. It, it was their experience. It, it also, for a window of time, like yeah, where 50s. you were out where I was in 1996. Leave me alone. Yeah, yeah. Just leave her alone. I fight with. I fight with imaginary um, 
opponents. I do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have the debates just in my head. Yeah. And um, I always win. You, I was gonna say, I please, t- please tell me your win. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but guys, you know what day it is. It's Thursday. It's a super special Thursday. My favorite day of the week. Actually, you know what? I every Thursday I say it's my favorite day of the week. Not this week. Why? It was yesterday. It was it my was birthday. Yesterday. So this is my second favorite day of the week, and the reason being, we have a little something here called Walk Through Thursday. Too bad we you didn't pick any of the good sounds we could have used for that. Why don't you just pick a random one? Okay. Gotta put it close to the mic. Gotta put it close to the mic. Nice. Roll the intro, please. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cause Walk Through Wednesday just begun. What is going on, guys? It is Walk Through Thursday. Thursday. The greatest day of the year. What we do on Walk Through Thursday is we open up the Bible. Bible's open. Speaking of the Bible being open, we have the polls running on Instagram. Yes. I'm sure you already follow, but if you don't, head on over to Crook and, at Crook and Crow on Instagram, and we are doing a Bible bracket. We're in the second round of it, pitting books against each other using verses from the books. So every day... You get two verses and you say, which one uh, means a little more to you today? Today. Yeah. Some people feel that we're saying, which one would you like to strike from existence? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And it's like, oh, I, I pick all of them. I know. And it's like, no, we know we, we all love the Bible here. It's sort of that's the whole, why we picked them because they're favorites. That's the whole point. But it's what did, what was when you looked at it, said today that mean, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to carry that one with me today. Yes. But anyway, yeah, head, head over there and start voting. So we open up the Bible and we pick a verse. We pick a verse from one of the 66 books in the Bible and um, we just, we break it down. Yeah. Uh, it's very easy. No, I don't know. I wouldn't say easy. I feel like a lot of people don't do it, but to talk about over, like, what does the theme of the story mean? Mm. What, what does this parable mean? What yeah. does this, what does the Bible mean? What, what's it all about? This brings it down. Well, how, let's just look at one sentence. Every, every sentence is good in the Bible. We just spoke on that. And so we'll, we just put one verse on a little pedestal and just look at it like, uh, it's like, uh, the Bible's a museum and, um, we are at one painting and we are saying, what does this painting mean? Oh, that's perfect. So anyway, we are going to get into it. We're going to go sentence by sentence, line by line, word by word, letter by letter. And we are just going to have fun. Yeah. So I guess I have to tell you the verse we're doing. Yes. So the verse today was actually in the bracket today's, today. It's today's, it's today's, cho- one of today's choices. One of today's choices. So this is from John, the book of John, okay. not to be confused with one John or two John or three John. Which is very confusing because there's John one, which is not one John one. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, this is. It's not very confusing when you first are. You know, you're confused, but in reality, yeah, it's, not it's, it's, it's you have the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So this is the Gospel of John, and then there was like letters that are later in the New Testament, post Jesus, written by John the Elder, that are written by John. Right. All right, here we go. So it's John twenty one twenty five. Get your the last chapter, the, the very last, last chapter, the last verse of the last chapter, the last verse of the last chapter. This is wrapping up. Yeah. Just like I wrapped up my my year. Yes. And started a new book. Right. This was wrapping up, John. Right. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. Okay. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. Pretty general, I would say. Um, It's kind of just like, well, what else did he do? Right. You know? And do you have anything to say about it? I do, but. Oh, no. Just, I thought you were just going to say for the listeners that. So it's the 21st book of John. So that means for 21 books, he's been talking about. Uh, Jesus's uh, mission and. Miracles. The the, the blind. Interactions. The dead. Yeah. The resurrection. So that's what he's referring to. So for everything I've said for 21, um, for 21 books. I've said, of course, yes. but it it I can't keep writing. I'm you know, yeah. <laughs> I, he, can, he could, but I mean, you couldn't. Yeah, there, there just wasn't like he said. There, there wouldn't be enough time to. Jesus was God on Earth, and right. so, of course, like the same way 
uh, you know, in the Bible, it's, we're looking at every word is great. It's like mm-hmm. every step he took was was something that was right, right down worthy. Yeah. And they just picked things out. Um, so what I want to talk about is okay. this. Is, is So we know what Jesus did or the, the from the Bible. Right. We know about the leper. You know, we know about uh, resurrecting people, water to wine. We know all this. Yes. And we talked about this a little bit earlier and we said, what would Jesus or who would Jesus? We were, we were, it was the circus podcast. We were talking about out, outcasts and we're like, if Jesus was here in 2022, what would he be doing? Right. And I bring that up because I like this verse a lot more than it. Like, it doesn't really say anything, but that's what I like. Sometimes we get so stuck in in the Bible. Yeah. In the in the historical writings of the bible and this is what jesus did i need to live like jesus and so i'm going to okay well he did that so i'll follow that he did that it opens up the idea that there's so much that he did that we don't know and i like it in the sense of it it sort of gives you the the freedom to think about the idea which all comes back to what would jesus do right and so you suppose you know if if there is no you know exact example yeah. that would parallel, what do you suppose? Yes, from what I've already told you, yeah, <laughs> that he would do. I, I gave you sort of what his ideas and, and his beliefs were, and and what he went out and did, and he did so much more. And so yeah, you're able to then say what would Jesus do, and and bring it into situations now. It, it's not right. oh, okay. Well, he's okay with these people. He's okay with these people. You know, like it's the idea of. No, he he was he was a he was doing everything. Right. Put him in any position, and you can use your own mind. You don't always. Uh, sometimes I I think maybe with like, um, maybe a real conservative uh Christian beliefs, it's you're saying if it's not in the Bible, then like, it's not right. Like right. I need to follow this exact. Well, obviously we we do follow exactly, but like this is this is it. This, this is, is it. This is it. Yeah. And. You, you don't allow yourself to truly understand like what who Jesus was and right. what he did, mm-hmm. and so I, I like it in that sense. It, it opens the door to say, yeah. "What would you, what did Jesus do? Yeah, what would Jesus do?" And it opens your mind because if you if you are f- somewhat familiar with the with the Gospels and you're you a lot of the like you said Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John they share stories, yeah, um, just told in their perception of it when he walked on water or when he did whatever and so you're, you're familiar with that and you say well the you know that's his highlight reel yeah and and we always talk about in this day and age about people's highlights reels and about your instagram and yeah. that this is the best like it's not fair that they only put the best um out there for everybody because it doesn't show what was going on behind the scenes well this is like the opposite and it's like this isn't a highlight reel these are stories Yes. That got told, but but the amount of interactions and just imagine, imagine every single person who saw him or interacted with him or heard something or, you know, they weren't all interviewed. It, there was no Internet. There was no, you know, way to compile yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, so you might say, oh, I know this. I know these stories. And it's like you actually don't know everything that Jesus did in that short time. Yeah. But you don't have to. You don't have to. I mean, yeah. And, and it just it does obviously show the greatness of yes. Jesus like yeah um it is sort of a praise in a way of, of being like you guys don't understand like yeah. uh and, and these stories were, were nothing compared to everything he did right and once again like there there like you need to like it, it sort of shows the greatness and the, and, yes. and the power and the almost and I'm sure also it's like words can't even describe right. how much he did right and and how you know, loving and powerful God is. And so right. why am I, I, I can try to tell you some of the stories yeah. that, you know, his followers were, were doing, but you, you would just have to believe that it's. And I, I just love it because it's like, it fills in, it fills in these gaps yeah. of, of when we don't know where, like he's show in, in the, in the um, gospels, he's showing up. Right. And it's like, all of a sudden he's yeah. on the mountainside and he's, he's multiplying fish. And then all of a sudden he's in the boat and you're just like, Oh, okay. But for, for John to end, um, his book by saying, guys, it was chock a block. Yeah. Every single second 
every single, you know, millisecond of being with him and, and what he was doing, even even when you weren't with him, when he was alone in the desert, yeah. we, we know that he was being tempted and he was he was um, meditating and fasting and, yeah. you know, but but you don't really know the people were waiting for him to come back. And, you know, yeah, and it kind of fills the story out of like he did have a short life yeah. on Earth, Jesus. Um, and so it's it's just saying that like. There is too much to fit yes. in any one's brain, let alone yeah. a book. Yeah, to even put down in words, in, yeah. in English words. Or, I guess it wasn't English at the time. Any language. But, <clears throat> yeah, and um, and, and once again, it's like, I, I think an important concept to think about is the stories that we know from the Bible of Jesus Um what were just stories about Jesus mm -hmm. and like what they're meant to do is to show us who he was. Right. And then it's up to us and it's part of our faith. Once so we learn about who he is and now you have a relationship with him and all that he, all that we don't know he did, all that he's doing now. Right. Like, inside of us. Like those stories are just meant for us to learn about Jesus. I right. think. And, and then once we know about the type of person he is, that's when I think it's important to, it gives you the ability to fill in those gaps. Right. And um, that's why I, th I think is a I'm a huge proponent of, you know, reading this, every, all the stories about Jesus, truly like learning about which direction he went into. Right. Because we're, we're following him. Like, it's not, I, I, once again, it's not he's telling us live this way. He's saying, this is how I, this is how I'm living. Right. Follow me. Right. And we're meant to live like him. And I do think it's an important uh like tool to practice of in situations saying what would jesus do we always say it right yeah. like but um you like it, it's not you don't really apply it and like in the sense of uh what would jesus do and like figure it out but in, in in questionable situations really think about okay well i know jesus from the stories right but if he was here now or if he was in this situation what would he do right or where would he be standing like what side of of history would he be on yeah now it's it's and sometimes it's like i don't know i'm confused and, yeah. and, and i don't want to be wrong but it's it's fine it's good to practice that right also you might think that um oh well how do we know that the stories that that the, that the apostles wrote about were the most important stories he's saying that there was so much like what if there's something even better well yes the yes john here is saying there's so much more but the bible is a protected word yes of god and it and it and it has survived all the people setting it on fire and being imprisoned for reading it and thousands of years passing it is protected so i would say that the the the, the parables that the four um men write about and spoke about those analogies um, are used because we say that that we take things figuratively. Yeah, they can be used in so many situations. Yes, and you know you really didn't. Have, sometimes I do it myself, where I'm I'm trying to drive the point home, and I just keep using different analogies. Like yeah, and how about the strawberry <laughs> to the basket, and how about the yeah. thing, you know? And it's like you're really like you you're really you're overdoing it, yeah. you know. And so it's a protected word of God, and God Himself blesses this book and keeps it going. So. The stories that we have are probably sufficient, like you said, yeah. for you to to know the path. Exactly. And, and once again, I mean, like Jesus spoke in parables. Uh, and I think part of that is the Bible. That's, what, that's the thing that's sort of, yeah, what I'm, what I'm trying to say about this is the Bible is our tool to how we live our lives, right? Like how to live like, good spiritual lives and go to heaven. And so... I think the Bible is perfect in the sense of, you know, with the parables right. and, and the way, uh, what those specific stories were that are timeless and stuff. Right. And so there is the Bible, which is perfect. And then there's Jesus who was living on earth. Yeah. Doing everything. So it's it, it's like everything maybe wasn't like a parable and what was, it, it was, he's going to be doing amazing miracles uh, and, right. and godly things. And, just on his own and, and and the book is meant to be it's sacred mm -hmm. and everything is is a tool but it wasn't like he shut down 
And then it's like, okay, it's time to do something that's going to be in this protected word. Right. It was, he was, it was a, it was a fluid uh, right. living. And yeah. then everything that went into the book made it perfect, but he never stopped and said, right. Oh, is this not going in the Bible? Okay. Right. Well, let me not help this person. Right. 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 <laughs> right. And, um, I, I feel that Jesus, um, when he came to earth, he wanted to simplify life for yes. us, you know, and really, really wanted to simplify life. Like, listen, love one another. Love your neighbor. Love yourself. Say love that you are father. Um, you're good. Yeah. I, I'm going to die for you. I'm going to, re- I'm going to relieve you of your sins and you're going to be, we're going to be together in heaven. Yes. E- even if you were a murderer, robber. Um, and so when I think of that type of Jesus and I think of the fact that he was doing us a favor, you know, the Old Testament was um, was so many rules and so many. Yeah. Um, not to discount. We love the Old Testament. Love but, you know, Testament. It, people were getting tied up yes. with being tied up. And even the apostles, you know, when you think about it, there's four apostles. Why didn't each one of them write? different stories yeah, yeah right and then you'd have we'd have four times the amount but each each apostles you're all writing say the one the one story and they all didn't but you know what i'm saying yeah i'm wondering if jesus you know to keep it simple for us like you know what let's let's not that they sat down in a boardroom and said this is what we're going to do yeah. but the way his plan unfolded you know that simple simple yeah. we don't like i said we don't need to beat you over the head with analogies yeah, no, that's a that's a good point, and you can look at the the size of the New Testament versus the Old Testament. Like, yeah. it's oh, words couldn't even fit, and it's like, well, you didn't even make as much as the Old Testament, was. right? But I I do agree with you in the sense of his, his whole whole idea about the Old Testament is we need to simplify it, like right, you, like it, it, it keep it simple, stupid, no, <laughs> but um, and so what? Yeah, is it also like? If you went with, he did this, he did this, he did this, mm-hmm. then you're looking at it like, okay, this is what I can do. Just like you look at the 200 commandments right. uh, that there were in the Old Testament yeah. and or that they were, you know, the Pharisees that were talking, oh, well, this is wrong. This is right. Yeah. Did, did, your, did it's like, here, take, take this as, as a, as a direction of, of, of who I am and right. how, and how to follow me. It's enough. It's enough. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and if the same way I'm saying practice it. It kind of forces you yeah. to some people, a lot of, you know, the Pharisees and stuff in the Old Testament, they need, they wanted those rules. Yeah. They, they were like, okay, well, I know exactly how to live. I know, right. I know about divorce. I know about what I can eat, what I can't. Fabric, yeah. And so this is sort of like, what do you think I would do? Right. Follow me. And, and, right. and it forces you to have that, that relationship and that understanding of yeah. who Jesus was and how to follow him using your own, like following your own heart right. and faith. Rather than having, yeah, everything written down for you, because then right. that's what truly makes it timeless. It's it's not. This is exactly it. it's it's timeless because it's like he did so many things, right? And it's like okay, well, I guess I can imagine what he would be doing. Yeah. But that's it, guys. Ta-da! That is it for Walk Through Thursday. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, write down something in the comments. <laughs> I don't know. We'll be back tomorrow for Dr. Seuss Friday. Always a good day. Until then, go out and uh, vote in the polls at Crook and Crow on Instagram. Peace.